Okay, welcome back. And uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, mount the tray that the servo uh, into the wing, with the servo into the wing, and also how to put the um, push rod and the uh, control horn on. So starting with just the wing, you got to make sure that you um, open up this hole right here. And um, using the tray, because uh, there's holes already drilled for uh, where to put the screws, drill four pilot holes using the um, pin vise with a one millimeter um, bit. And then, um, uh, then put two drops of CA in there to harden the hole. And before the CA dries, take either a paper clip or a straight pin and make sure that those holes stay open and don't uh, close over with the uh, CA. Okay. And um, a small paper clip is less than a millimeter. The, the straight pin is probably about a half a millimeter. Um, <clears throat> and so that makes sure that the um, holes are open. Okay. And then, um, uh, let's see, what else? Uh, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and mount this. Uh, first off, I'm going to put the uh, uh, wire. So you can see what I'm doing here. I'm going to put the wire through here. Oh, it's not that hard. There we go. Okay. And then with my finger, poke it up the hole. And um, mount it so that the um, um, servo arm is closest to the um, trailing edge or the aileron. Okay. Now that that's in place, um, <clears throat> I can go ahead and uh, put the four screws in. One, two, three, four. Make sure I got all four of them sitting here. Okay. Now these screws uh, are the crazy kind of screws that the, usually come with these. That, that they're sort of half of a um, flat blade screwdriver and half of a Phillips screwdriver. And when you have those, the flat blade works better. And this um, um, battery operated drill comes with a flat blade flat blade uh, comes with a whole set of um, bits. I'm going to use a flat blade to put that in there. So I'm going to start it in the hole and then slowly and carefully keeping it nice and straight and holding the tray down I'm going to put these four in. Okay. All right, uh, that's good. I'm going to put the other three in off camera. Be right back. Okay, now that the um, four screws are holding the servo tray in place in the wing, I'm going to next. I'm going to assemble the um, uh, push rod. So the way I like to do that is the first thing I do is I take a black sharpie marker. There's two ends. This end has the uh, threads on it. This end doesn't. So I'm going to mark the end that doesn't have it with a nice black mark on one point. Okay. The, re the reason for that is when you go to screw the um, um, clevis on, you'll find that it's difficult to hold the um, wire in place. So I've got a nice pair of pliers here and I'm going to hold it in such a way that I can see that black mark right there. So I can watch that black mark and make sure the wire doesn't turn. And then this tool is a handy little tool you buy from Tower Hobbies um, for mounting clevises, okay? Or screwing them on and off. And so while you're holding this tight, you screw this on. 
Now, it says in the manual to do 14 turns. I don't bother with 14 turns. I want it on halfway. Because halfway means there's plenty of threads left to go in either direction. Um, put, and I don't want it to strip out. Um, so I'm going to get it about halfway and I'm just going to eyeball it halfway is right about there. Okay. I don't know if it's 14 turns or not. <laughs> so you can see that the um, push rod is uh, sticking out there just about the same amount as it's sticking out the other side. So that's about halfway. Um, so now that that's in place and before you do anything else, you have to put the fuel tubing uh, on this. So it came with a nice uh, piece of fuel tubing, but it's thin walled and not very strong. And I actually uh, didn't rip it all the way, but I, I uh, cut it a little bit and decided it wasn't good enough. So I'm going to take some heavy duty uh, fuel tubing. It's, there's two sizes of fuel tubing, medium and large that I use. And so uh, this is the large fuel tubing, meaning it's got a larger interior diameter. I'm going to take, take a nice pair of needle nose pliers and stick it in there. And, okay, there we go, right there. And then um, using the needle nose pliers to open up the fuel tubing, I'm going to open it up and get it all the way up where I want it, right there. Okay, so now that fuel tubing is all the way, um, actually a little further than I want it, but that's all right. I'll swiggle it back a little here and then pull the, um, those out and, and just push that back just a little bit. So that fuel tubing is not all the way in place. That gives you room to open up the, um, clevis. But, uh, and then we'll move it forward when we've got the clevis on. So there is the uh, rod assembled. So now the next thing we need to do is attach the um, control horn to the clevis. And I'm going to use the outermost hole. Okay. Just like that and snap it in place. Now I can move the fuel tubing all the way forward to sort of lock that in. Okay. And so there's the control horn uh, on the push rod on the clevis. And we're doing that to um, make sure that we know exactly where to screw this in. So I'm going to put the um, push rod uh, into the quick connect. Okay. And um, make sure you can see this. And I'll push it far enough forward so that the holes of the control horn are um, over the gap between the wing and the aileron. So they sit right on the gap. And with that in place, I'm going to take my 3 30 seconds, um, um, hex driver and lock down the, the quick connect. So, all right, so now you can see, hopefully you can see, that those holes are um, right over the gap. Let me make sure they're right over the gap. Mm, no, they're not over the gap. Well, the other thing I'm going to do is turn on the radio and attach 
here's the receiver, and the receiver has the two um, wires for the aileron. That's the blue wire for the right aileron. Here's the beige white wire for the left aileron. And so that's the left aileron. And I'm going to turn the radio, ra radio's on. I'm going to turn the switch on for the receiver. Okay. And that centers that. And, um, okay, yep, yeah, it uh, wasn't centered. Well, first off, I'm going to move it a little bit. Okay. So, now I need to, now you can see that the holes, now that I centered that, you can see the holes are back from the gap. Okay. So I need to, um, do a couple things here. First thing I need to do is um, loosen the quick connect and slide that whole slide that thing forward. At the same time I'm pressing down on it to make sure it's going to be flat against the wing. Tighten the quick connect. Okay. And now those holes are right over the gap as I hold that down. Okay. Now the other thing before, before we get too far here, the next thing to do is to, um, with a Sharpie marker, measure about a quarter inch from the uh, leading edge side uh, toward the leading edge uh, from the quick connect to cut off and only leave about a quarter inch of, um, of push rod because obviously that uh, push rod is going all the way out to here so uh, I don't need it that long and so now that that's centered we know exactly where the um, Okay, yep, still centered. All right, so I've got that marked. Um, I'm just going to leave all of this on. Undo this. Quick connect. Pull that out. And taking a nice sharp pair of cutters here. Same cutters I used to cut my fuel tubing with. And cut that off. Okay, then I can put it back in the quick connect. And this is still centered. Alright, now I'm going to sort of try to hold the aileron in its normal position. And line up those holes again. And lock down the quick connect. Okay. All right, I twisted the I wasn't holding the Okay, I wasn't holding the control horn straight. Okay, there we go. Now we've got a short push rod and the holes are over the gap and we're in good shape. Okay, now that that's in place, um, I'm going to hold the aileron sort of, I'm centering it with my fingers, grabbing here at the root and holding that. And I'm going to take my pin vise 
and drill a hole straight down right there. Okay. And I'm going to take a one of the, there's two long screws and four short screws. The four short screws are already in here, so you should have two long screws left. And I'm going to drill that in. I got my finger underneath it so I can feel when it just comes out the other side. Okay, so I got a, just a little tip of the sharp point out the other side here. And that control horn isn't down all the way, but it will be in a second. So now that there's a little tip there, I take the black um, base of the control horn, put it on that tip, make sure that the um, it's in the hole there, right like that. Hold that together and tighten the screw all the way through. Okay. All right, just a little bit tighter. Okay, now um, the base of this is at a slight angle. It's okay. But what I got to make sure now is, is that the other side is at a slight angle. Like that. Okay. Take my pin vise and drill a hole for the other one. I'm drilling it from both sides to make sure that the hole is nice and straight and it's going to hit that uh, um, back plate on the other side. So now we'll just screw this one in carefully. I'm going to stop the camera a second. Okay, so the problem with that second screw was the fact that uh, sometimes the grain of the wood is going to guide that um, uh, screw in a different direction than the pilot hole. Um, so what I had to do is take my needle nose pliers and hold it straight with one hand and then using the other hand. By the way, being able to screw with uh, a screw like that with one hand with this thing is a wonder. So I was able to hold it and then put it in and then it came out the other side nice and straight. It has to go straight up and down. Um, notice that the back plate uh, is not straight. Okay, that's okay. That the front plate matches the back plate. Okay, so this front plate here matches the back plate. And uh, it comes through nicely. Um, 
that that's not completely straight is not a big deal because they are plastic. And now as you exercise them, you'll see that the um, control horn okay. and you can also see the end of the push rod isn't going to touch uh, the aileron okay. um, I will have to, to um, limit the servo travel so it doesn't touch the either end of the hole there but that's now in place and uh, gonna work well and you can see I don't know if you can see it or not right there that's full travel that's a hundred percent throw of the servo arm and that's full travel of the um, of the aileron because the gap um, you know there's a bevel on the on the aileron and that bevel and gap just closed exactly right. So I'm getting full travel of that. That'll be good. Um, so that's in place and the aileron servo is mounted to the wing. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next video.